just what the doctor ordered. Six days of riding Vietnam. Over six days, we will be doing a huge loop that starts along the beautiful coastline of Vietnam from the Trang, the gateway to Vietnam's central highlands. Then we'll head inland to the mountains with endless curves, great views and remote villages along the way. Slowly we will work our way back to the coastline again, all the way sampling Vietnam's famous cuisine and unique culture. We will be deliberately avoiding the tourist route to see the real Vietnam. This vibrant country is developing quickly and Vietnam motorbike tours is one of the very few left that steer clear of the well-trodden tourist highway. It's the perfect way to see the real Vietnam. It's only a nine hour direct flight from Sydney to Vietnam. And the plan for our first day was a scenic coast ride from Nha Trang to Vinh He. But a change of plan will see us doing a longer ride through more of the hinterland. And we're all revved up, so no complaints about a longer ride on our first day. first rider briefing we got a detailed rundown of how the Vietnam road rules work and how to blend in with the traffic. Compared to the West the Vietnamese are very patient cooperative drivers and riders but if you don't know how the system works you can get into trouble easily. Our guides keep a close eye on us and provide tips if anyone is having trouble. We will hit very little traffic anyway. We are only going into towns for accommodation each night. The rest of the time, it's the remote regional areas that Westerners normally don't get to see. Vietnam's coastline is over 3,000 kilometres long with countless beautiful beaches, islands and views from the headlands. When I first visited Vietnam 30 years ago, this coastal highway was a narrow, rutted nightmare and you would have to dodge huge potholes, animals, pedestrians and cyclists. Now it's a modern highway with plenty of fast corners for the more spirited riders. The rest of us cruise along taking in the constant views of the South China Sea and surrounding islands. on our bikes we are all riding Lifan cruisers. Vietnam laws restrict the engine size that visitors can use but these little single cylinder bikes are just about perfect. Over 
the next days we will discover how anything bigger than this will just get you into a world of trouble with the twisty inland roads through countless villages. some interesting bridges on our trip. Here is the first one. The tour guides put a lot of work into planning their routes, so we get to ride in some very out of the way places and avoid highways as much as possible. Normally we would have stuck to the coast road, but our change of route now takes us inland. We begin the long gentle climb up into the highlands. It doesn't take long before the temperatures start to drop as we climb into the mountainous interior. This is a pile of fun. Me, I've always been a dirt rider. And I have tried road riding a few times, but I always got bored quickly and sold the road bikes. I was worried that all this road riding was just going to be the same, but it is completely different. The terrain is constantly changing. There is so much to look at. And while we rarely do more than 70 kilometers an hour, that is plenty fast as you don't know what's around that next corner. Water buffalo on the road, tractors, a wedding, <laughs> a funeral procession. Vietnamese people are invariably warm and friendly, which seems strange if you know much about Vietnam's history. It took a long time to push out their French colonial masters. Then there was the brutal Vietnam War against the USA and various allies. Fighting with the Khmer Rouge as they committed genocide within Cambodia. Then a prolonged border war with China through the 1980s and 1990s. <laughs> and yet it doesn't matter which country you are from, the Vietnamese people are always welcoming to the Yanks, French, Aussies, everyone. It's very easy to have a stereotype in your mind of what Vietnam looks like. Most of us form an idea from all those Vietnam War films, so it's easy to think that everything is either dense jungle or rice paddies. But as we ride through, it's constantly changing. Rolling hills, mountains, plains, forests. And the temperature varies dramatically. As you head further into the mountainous interior, the temperatures can get quite cool. And then there's a big variation between, say, tropical Saigon in the south and Hanoi in the north. 
backpacking here 30 years ago, I remember at certain times of the year that narrow coastal highway would often be reduced to one lane as the farmers dried out their harvests on the road. Well, with the multi-lane highway, that does not happen anymore. But it's great to see this custom is still continuing in the rural areas. And of course, at certain times of the day, it will be livestock peak hour, as goats, cows and water buffalo head home after a tough day's work. We are finally back to the coastline after our big detour inland and heading for the small coastal town of Vinhe. We're staying in out of the way places. The guys still try to get us into the best hotels possible. <laughs> this one looks pretty posh. Every day the guides ensure ice cold beers are ready for us. Oh, can't wait. Yo! Yo! It's Vietnamese for cheers. Hope you enjoyed the ride, guys. Hang around for more.